A lot of people don't want to be considered a baby father or a baby mama. But if y'all not married, that's what you are. Because God established what marriage is in the scriptures. God established what should happen before you lay down and have a child. What does it mean to convert? Yeah, okay, we got you. To convert means to change, right? So if you are behaving a certain way, you live in a certain way, you're doing certain things, but to convert from that or to convert to something else means that you're changing from what you currently do to doing what you would be, right? Watch this, Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. This is going to explain the conversion. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect. You hear I'm talking about the law. Keep the law. Keep the commandments. Keep the law, right? It says the law of the Lord is perfect. Doing what? Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Invert, convert my fault. We communicate, you know what I'm saying? It says the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul, right? So, there are things that you do right now that aren't according to the law, correct? Give me uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, 29. Ecclesiasticus 19, 29. Because I want to show you something, Zay. We got spiritual powers, brother. You know what I'm saying? We, we, you can come up here, it's a joke, but you can come up here and we can observe you and look at you and pretty much give you a brief diagnosis on what you need help with. What you need to change, what you might need to do, right? I can look at you and say, this brother got a beard on his face. He's keeping the commandments. The commandments tell men to wear their manly badge of dignity. It says, wear your beard, right? Don't shave, don't mar the corners of your head. Don't mar the corners of your beard. Hey, man, don't cut that thing off, bro. That's a manly badge of dignity. God gave that thing to you as a man, right? That's what it is. It's the spirit. Spirit won't let you cut it off, right? Watch this. This is why we can look at you and tell. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 29. Uh -huh. A man may be known by his look. A man may be known by his look. We can look at a man and say, I know what he about. We can look at a sister. If a sister got on no clothes in February downtown, what can we say about that sister? She wide open. You know what I'm saying? We can just tell. We can tell by her look, right? Same thing with men. We can tell if a man walking around, he got his pants sagging, he got a blunt in his mouth, he got damn tattoos all over his face and body. We can tell that he lives a certain type of lifestyle, correct? It's not very hard, right? It says a man may be known by his look. And one that has understanding. And one that has understanding, right? You can look at us men up here, see that we organized. Everybody got on purple shirts, right? These brothers standing in a perfect line. Right? Brothers got their fringes, they got their boots. You can tell we're in order. You can tell that there is understanding here. We're bringing out the Bible, we're reading the Bible to y'all. We're explaining the scriptures, telling y'all who y'all are according to the scriptures through the Spirit of the Lord. Right? You can tell that there's understanding there. Right? We can look around also and tell where there's understanding lacking. And what's our job? Our job is to then provide that understanding. Read. By his countenance, uh -huh. when thou meetest him, Tell a man if he has understanding by his countenance, by his face. That's what countenance means. Countenance is his face. When you come up here, you're not going to try to rush this line because his brother look kind of scared. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you ain't, you ain't going to try to do nothing stupid. You know what I'm saying? But you can tell a man of understanding by his face, by his countenance, by his look. Read. A man's attire uh -huh. and excessive laughter. A man's attire and excessive laughter. What does it do? And God show and go gate shoe what he is. His gate, his shows what he is. You can tell that brother be wilding out. Look at him. That sister be wilding out. Look at him. That sister is modest. That sister probably got a husband. She look like she got a husband. That brother look like he take care of his family, right? That brother look like he got understanding. That sister look like she's stupid. We can we can see these things, right? So that's why we're able to come out here. We have to look at you, Zay. We have to say, all right. Zay is, has a repenting spirit. 
you are been, you, you're sitting here listening to us bring out a word in the scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, that you've never heard before, right? You may have known of certain stuff, but you're sitting here listening, allowing us to entertain you with the word of God, right? That shows something about you. Now we're like, all right, this brother sitting here, he listening. I'm going to bring out some law. The laws run people away. Believe it or not, once we tell people that they got to change, they don't want nothing to do with that. They want, not, they want us to uh, speak under them smooth words, right? That's what the scriptures say. They, we don't want to hear no laws. We don't want to change. But the moment we bring out laws, they gone. So you sitting here, standing, listening, we're going to bring out some laws to you. You understand? That's why, you know, brothers like, give me a law, give me a law, give me a law. Because you have a spirit that's been sitting here listening, and it's humbling. It's a humble spirit, right? So give me... Uh, First Kings, I want fringes. I don't. Did they read fringes to you? They yeah. didn't read fringes. Get me. Uh, I got a question. I'm gonna ask you a question because one thing that we need to do is study sin specific, right? You have to know where you fall short and want to fix that, right? So I'm gonna ask you. It might be personal. You ain't gonna answer, right? You got a wife, girlfriend? No, you got kids. You got two kids, same woman, same woman, right? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. I'm going to show you something. This is what we're able to do. J just by us dialogue, we're able to share with you the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of, of old through the scriptures, right? What does God say about, and you're not married to this woman, read. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. That's God's words, right? From the beginning, God established marriage between who? Between man and woman, between Adam and Eve. He established the marriage there, right? God says marriage is honorable in all, and all means in all things, right? If you have children, it's going to be honorable. Why? They're going to raise. They're going to grow up in a two-parent household. Stability. They're going to understand. Your daughters or your sons are going to understand how to treat. Their mother, right? If you have, you got son or daughter? Both a boy and a girl, right? Your daughter's going to be able to uh, grow up and see you treating her mother a certain way, righteously, and she's going to know how to be treated by a man when you give your daughter away, right? Your son is going to know how to treat his wife when he becomes of age to take on a wife or when another man gives his daughter to your son. Right? Because they were able to see the example where? Where were they able to see the example? At home. Right? So marriage is honorable in all. It's a financial uh, investment. Right? It's a, a spiritual investment. Right? You get, into, you get with this person for the rest of your life. You want to be in love with them. You want to be able to share a life with them. Raise children together with them build homes with them, right? So it says marriage is honorable in all, in all things. Read. And the bed undefiled. And the bed undefiled. Nobody's going to judge you for what you decide to do with your wife in the bedroom. It's not, there's no problem. You can have sex all you want when it's your wife. That's your wife. Likewise a woman with her husband. That's y'all. That's y'all thing. God says that's honorable. Under what though? Under marriage. Exactly. Right? Read. But whoremongers uh -huh. and adulterers, God will judge. Who fits the category of whoremongers and adulterers? Those are those brothers and sisters who don't want to get married. Those are those brothers and sisters who think that sleeping around is fun. What's the uh hot girl summer? Right? Now now they got city girls. Dudes is taking on that same spirit, calling themselves city boys. That's gay to me. I ain't gonna hold you. But, but that is the culture today. Why? Because misunderstanding and evil is running rampant in the world. That's why we need brothers like you to come up and listen and learn, right? We're gonna tell y'all. We, we can give y'all the basic scriptures. Like, oh yeah, you, you ain't got no fringes on. You gotta wear some fringes, man. I see you, you got a beard, you keep your beard, right? But it's those personal things, the things that you do that we can't see. That's what 
you gotta change. Well, you gotta change all of them. But that's what you gotta start to examine, the stuff that we can't see. You know what I'm saying? How old are your children? Eight and two. So you, this is a long-term relationship you've been dealing with this woman, on and off, right? Y'all still deal with each other? Nah? Okay. Well, we know what the scriptures say, right? So this may, it may be, it's behind you, right? It's, the, it's your past. Going. You gave it to God. This is the thing, uh, Zay. Get me, uh, can two walk together instead of people? Who got that? Can two walk together? You got that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We got armor bearers over here, man. Can two walk together? I want to show you something, Zay, because it's easier to just give it to God, right? But this is you giving it to God. You coming up here and getting the understanding of what the Bible, of what God actually wants you to do, this is going, this is you giving it to God. Read. The book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 3. Uh -huh. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? If you believe in the scriptures and she don't, that's not the one before you. If she believe in the scriptures and you don't, she, you're not the man for her, right? So on and so forth. Y'all have to be agreed, right? So with this, you got children with the woman, so the, the, the situation is kind of, it's, it's intricate. Because not only do you have two children with the same woman, there's a large gap in age. Eight to two is a six-year gap, right? So whether it's been a eight-year relationship or a six-year relationship, or whether it's been on and off a six years, it's complicated. It's, it's the situation kind of. But one thing that you have to let govern you is this. This got to govern you, right? If this is a woman that you want to be with, because you got children with her, right? Then y'all gotta come together under the banner of this. She gotta know this too. But if you don't want to deal with the system, even though you got kids, and some brothers like some brothers got kids with women from the world before they came into the truth, the knowledge of the truth, and you know they 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 carry that cross, they bear that cross. It might be child support. It might be uh, they don't get to see their children. It might be that they're a single parent. Right? Some people, you, you got to bear your burden, right? But this is paramount. So going forward, you would need to know, okay, before I lay down with a woman, I have to be married to her. I have to be married to her because God says whoremongers and adulterers, he's going to judge them. Those brothers and sisters that's sleeping around that's not married, God's going to judge them. How has he judged them? Now you want child support. Are you on child support? You very well could be. Are you you got full custody or she got custody? Neither one of them got full custody. You a father. That's good. That's good. You want to know what to do? I want you to, Jamie, right now, this is what we're going over with Zay, right? We're going over what God requires of man and woman under the, as far as marriage is concerned. You got a husband? No? How old are you? you know, 41. All right, check this out. This is what we're going into, right? We got brothers and sisters who are single mothers, single fathers. You a mother? Yes. Right? We got brothers and sisters who are single, single fathers, single mothers, and they say that they believe in God, or they want to do better according to what God says, right? So what we're doing is we're showing what God has to say about the matter. Thessalonians, this is for you, Zay. I want you to pay attention to, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Jamie. Jamie. You, I want you to pay attention to this too, Jamie. Read. The book that's, of... Hey, that scripture stand too, though. If you don't work, you don't eat. Read. The book of First Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh -huh. But if any provide not for his own... If any provide not for his own, you laid down with that woman, you had children with her. It's your responsibility to take care of your children. And same thing for the father of your children. I don't know the history. There could be a lot of intricate details, right? But as men, we are charged with providing for what is ours. Read. And it, especially for those of his own house. Especially for those of his own house. Can you call it your own house if you lay down with a woman, have children, and you don't marry them? You can't. You can't. That's just your baby mama and your kids until y'all get married. And I, and, and I know it sounds harsh like that. A lot of people don't want to be considered a baby father or a baby mama. 
But if y'all not married, that's what you are. Because God established what marriage is in the scriptures. God established what should happen before you lay down and have a child. So, read that part again from the top. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh -huh. But if any provide not for his own. So, Zay, if you didn't provide. Especially for those of his own house. Especially for those of your own house, your kids. Read. He hath denied the faith. You denied the faith. And it's worse than an infidel. And an infidel is a non-believer. You're worse than somebody who doesn't want anything to do with God and they don't believe in him. If you decide that you don't, so it's good that you do. I ain't forgot, you, know, you say you take care of yours. That's good. Yes, sir. So what do I do with, like, my kids are just staying with you. Uh-huh. 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 So, go back to Hebrews chapter 10. I want to show you something, Zay. We got to be able to read between the lines, right? When we have the scriptures here, they tell us what to do. You got to be able to break it down and then make a decision, a form decision after that. Watch this. Read it again. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. Read and the bed undefiled. And the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers. Whoremongers. Meaning those brothers that lay down with women and don't marry them. Read. And adulterers. And adulterers. Same thing with women. Women do the same thing. They lay down with men and they don't marry them. Read. God will judge. God's going to judge you. It is now, the judgment is, you're not going to be able to take care of your kids the way that you want to. You're not going to be able to see your kids the way that you want to. Why? Because you got a baby mama. You got a baby mama, man. That's and, and it is the result of the decisions that you made as a man. You understand that? And what you do from here is you own up to that. Give me, uh, get me. I want Matthew chapter ten first. No, come back, Jamie. Hi. <laughs> right. So. Uh, Matthew 10, hold that, and then get uh, go back to Acts chapter 3. This is what you do. Because the system is set up against black men. You can't just go snatch your kids from your baby mama. Even though neither one of y'all got custody, if you go up and you take your kids from her, it's gonna, you're going to have to pay. You're going to have hell to pay, bro. That's just how the, 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 the odds are stacked against you. You understand? Automatically, you just being a black man. Ain't you 23? You're, you're young enough for your life to be ruined from here on, from here forward. You understand? So you have to be wise according to this. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 36. Pay attention to this, Zay. This is very important. Read. This has to do with the family unit. Read. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. A man's foes, when he comes into this knowledge of the Bible, the foes shall be they of his own household, right? You're supposed to have been married this woman. A six-year relationship or on and off, however it was working, an eight-year-old and a six and a two-year-old, y'all was supposed to have been married, right? It says, a man's foes shall be who? A man's foes shall be they of his own household. Your, your baby mama, the mother of your children, are going to come up and she's going to snatch your kids and she's going to, because y'all having disagreements, you're not going to be able to get, you know what I'm saying? It's just trouble. That's what's going to have to happen. That's what happens. Read. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. If you love father or mother more than Christ, you're not worthy of Christ. Read. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And if you love your son or your daughter more than Christ, you're not worthy of Christ. Read. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So if you can't take the decisions you made and the consequences that came with them and follow Christ, you're not worthy of him.
and leading by example. 